Hi everyone and welcome back to the Demystifying Research channel. Today we'll be walking you through the different phases of a clinical trial. So what is a clinical trial? Well, according to the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, a clinical trial serves the purpose of finding the answer to a specific research question. In terms of drug trials, the question is whether these drugs are safe to be administered and produce the desired results. This is answered through a series of phases that break down these trials into a standardized and reproducible process. In this video, we will be outlining those phases specifically for a drug trial, identifying the length, purpose, method, and difficulties associated with each phase. We will also be exploring how these phases lead to the production of the COVID-19 Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. Starting with the preclinical stage. Preclinical studies are the initial steps taken toward drug development. The purpose of this stage is to prove a certain level of safety and efficacy prior to human application. This is usually done through animal testing, as animals model human conditions. It's important to note that the Canadian Council of Animal Care oversees animal testing to ensure that practices are ethical within Canada. At this stage, if the lab reaches some level of success, they typically acquire a sponsor who provides funding for a trial and applies to Health Canada for approval. Sponsors may be organizations who benefit from the success of the trials. The length of this phase has a large variation because many levels of approval are needed in order to proceed. Some of the difficulties associated with this stage are funding, sponsorship, and ethical approval. Now on to phase one, which is the first official step of a clinical trial. Moving on to this phase implies that the trial has been approved by Health Canada and funding has been acquired. That being said, this phase must be monitored by the Research Ethics Board as humans are now involved. Similar to the preclinical stage, the purpose of this stage is safety and efficacy, but more specifically is to determine an appropriate dosage range and identify unexpected reactions to the drug. The method used in this phase is the administration of the drug to a typical sample size of less than 100 healthy low-risk subjects, which is monitored through screening, imaging, and sampling. The FDA reports that phase 1 takes an average of several months to complete. Some difficulties associated with this phase include a high subject dropout rate, failure to follow up, or issues with the trial design that need modification. In this phase, the approximate success rate is 70% for drug trials. Moving on to phase two. For phase two, the FDA reports an average length of several months to two years. Phase two's purpose is to determine how effective the drug is and narrow down the most appropriate dosage. To reach that goal, this phase uses a sample size of up to several hundred participants who are at higher risk with a targeted condition. Phase two has an approximate success rate of 33%, and researchers may have difficulties in the result analysis of this phase because of the small sample size. In May 2020, Pfizer and BioNTech announced their first vaccine administration, reporting they were undergoing phases one and two. With a total sample size of 360 for both phases, Phase 1 had subjects aged 18 to 55 years old as low-risk participants. And once Phase 1 provided evidence of safety and efficacy, participants older than 55 were administered the vaccine in Phase 2. Phase 3 is one of the more time-consuming phases of a clinical trial because it has so many components. The purpose is mainly efficacy and comparisons of the drug to the standard one already in the market. This is to determine if the drug is making any advancements that a previous one has not already achieved. The method of data collection is experimental, and with a sample size that ranges from 300 to 3,000 individuals with the targeted disease. Among researchers, a randomized placebo-controlled trial, or RCT, is considered the standard for testing drugs in this phase. Unknown to the randomly selected participants, the control group is administered the drug and the placebo group is administered the placebo. The main difficulties of this phase are subject retention and follow-up, as many participants are used. For phase 3, the FDA reports a success rate of 25 to 30 percent. Success in this phase results in the drug's release into the population. This phase has an average length of 1 to 4 years. In early December 2020, Health Canada approved the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine for administration. Pfizer reports having used a randomized placebo-controlled trial in their phase 3 process with a control group of 21,823 people and a placebo group of 21,828 people. After approximately 21 days, a second dose was administered, and the results of this controlled trial led to the approval. The participants were 16 to 55 years old, with 40% of them being high risk as they were over 55 years old. 
The purpose of Phase 4 is to monitor the long-term results of the drug release that occurred in Phase 3. Method-wise, data is collected on the positive and negative effects through a survey or database. In this case, thousands of participants and their data are used to conduct systematic reviews. In Phase 4, there is no finite length, as this is a study of long-term effects that can potentially go on for several years. For the COVID-19 vaccine, this is the present phase. Researchers are currently collecting data on the long-term effects of the vaccine as we speak. Some reviews have already been published and can be found on the references page in the description below. In this phase, it may be difficult to achieve the desired sample size and determine the necessary intervals to follow up with patients. Each phase of a clinical trial has a specific purpose and methodology with its own associated difficulties. Overall, clinical trials are the backbone of drug production and have led to the administration of important treatments with a recent one being the COVID-19 vaccine. We hope this video expanded your knowledge on clinical trials and potentially cleared up any misconceptions about the process. Thank you!